I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Matt Duchesne of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. I'm Ryan Johansson of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. And before we get started on the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show. And once you're getting educated about the show, click on that merchandise tab. And that's going to take you directly to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, and all of our different special event t-shirts, by the way. We'll have another one of those coming out in the store very soon. All the gimmicks you've come to know and love from the Renegades of Puck, they're still in the store. Don't worry. Bed sets, wall art, throw pillows, and yes, socks. You can catch them all in the online store for the Renegades of Puck by clicking the merchandise tab right there on our home website. We've sold out so that you can buy in. Social media is of critical importance to this independent hockey operation. We sure could use a little bit of support and help on the following platforms. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Any of those platforms will go a long way to assisting the Renegades of Puck. You can find our behind the scenes live streaming channel on Twitch. You can also find us on YouTube. Thank you so much to all of the recent subscribers right there. When it comes to the audio podcast, you can find us on numerous platforms. Best thing to do is just search Renegades of Puck in your preferred platform. But you can find a couple of examples here. Google, Spotify, Stitcher. Amazon, all of those different locations are where you can find the Renegades of Puck podcast completely for free. And thank you so much to the Full Press NHL Network for helping us with the promotion of the podcast. Stick taps, love, and respect to each and every one of you out there. Venmo is the easiest way that you can help out the show. Please become a sponsor by making a donation. Every single dollar goes directly to helping the Renegades of Puck. You can do that by searching Renegades of Puck on Venmo or scanning the QR code that's currently on your screen. As you can see, we've made significant upgrades throughout this season here in the bunker, the microphone, the camera, the lighting. And yes, now we are working on upgrading the computers and behind the scenes technology to make the show that much better and that much more efficient. We are making some significant upgrades. Thanks to Generous Renegades, just like you watching and listening right now. Home base freak out too. I've been working the phones. I have been talking to everybody about home base freak out too. I'll talk to you more about that before the end of the episode. But Tailgate Brewery, Music Row, that's the location. The 24th of March, that's the date. 7 p.m. is when we'll get everything started. It's all ages, no cover charge at all, and you'll have to bring an ID. But that's the only requirement to get in. So please, come on out. Bring all of the renegades in your life. Bring the whole family out. Let's get together away from the rink. Let's have a night of fun and socializing where we can take a break from hockey and just get to know each other a little bit better. It's going to be a tremendous event. I know of several special guests that are going to be in attendance. We'll be announcing those and tagging those people on our social media platform. So again, another reason for you to go ahead and follow us there on social media. So please join us at Home Base Freakout, Mutants Grow, Tailgate Brewery on the 24th of March. We are so, so looking forward to the night before the Pecorine statue unveiling at the plaza at Bridgestone Arena. So... It is an easy opportunity for you to spend a Friday night with the Renegades of Puck. Now, I know it's time for the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, so let me deliver the goods. It's time for Operation Number 729. That's right, Operation 721. It's time for Show 729 for the Renegades of Puck. And at this moment in hockey history, the National Predators currently find themselves in fifth place in the Central Division. They've skated in 65 games. That is tied for the least amount of games played within the Central Division. They currently have a record of 34, 24, and 7, 75 points. On home ice, they have a record of 17, 11, and 3. They've scored 188 goals. Four, they've given up 190. That's a goal differential of minus 2. The National Predators' next opponent is a Central Division opponent. As a matter of fact, the National Predators' next Two opponents are Central Division opponents. This game will be the Chicago Blackhawks. They have skated in 67 games on the season. They have a record of 23, 38, and 6. 52 points has them in 8th place in the basement of the Central Division. On the road, they have a record of 9, 20, and 3. They've given up 171 goals on the season. Now, they've scored 171 goals. They've given up 239 goals on the season. They have a goal differential of minus 
68. Now, let's talk about the Central Division standings and let's talk about the wild card standings because we have a whole new plot line to start following along with here. Let's start with the Central Division, then we'll talk about the wild card. The Dallas Stars are currently and still in first place, as they have been for quite some time. 87 points. The Minnesota Wild are at 84 points in second place. The Colorado Avalanche have picked up their pace as of late third place, and that is your automatic three qualifying playoff teams from the Central at this moment in time. The Winnipeg Jets are in fourth place with 79 points. The National Predators are in fifth place with 75. And then St. Louis, Arizona, and Chicago will expect to start seeing little ease next to those particular teams coming up here very soon. So for the Central Division, when it comes to the automatic qualifying spot of third, the Nashville Predators are five points currently behind the Colorado Avalanche. They've skated in the same number of games as the Colorado Avalanche, and the Avs, like the Preds, are surging as of late. The Winnipeg Jets, the team between Colorado and Nashville, though, they are starting to slide a little bit. Now, this most importantly affects the wild card race. Seattle Kraken have actually dropped back into the wild card number one spot with 81 points. The Winnipeg Jets are in the second wild card spot with 79 points. And then the Nashville Predators have 75 points. So after tonight's action, the Preds find themselves only four points out of a playoff spot with no other teams to climb over just head to head against Winnipeg. And did I mention head to head against Winnipeg? Well, two critical, important things here about that. First, the National Purrs have skated in three fewer games than the Winnipeg Jets, so there are six additional points in hand for the Nashville Purrs. Four points behind in the standings, six points in hand could be one of the most important factors down the stretch of this regular season. Also, for the Nashville Predators... They'll have the head-to-head -head matchup against the Winnipeg Jets coming up this Saturday at Bridgestone Arena. So after the Nashville Purs wrap up this game against the Chicago Blackhawks, they'll close out the homestand against the Winnipeg Jets, but immediately have to jump on a plane Sunday for Sunday's game in New York against the Rangers. Tuesday, they'll be in Buffalo back home and a very, very big weekend. It'll be the 23rd of March versus Seattle, and then, of course, the 24th home base freakout, too, at Tailgate Brewery Music Row, and the 25th will also be Seattle. That's the same day that they'll unveil the Pecorine statue out there on the plaza at Bridgestone Arena. So the Seattle Kraken in town for two consecutive games against the National Predators. And then the Preds will actually close that weekend out against the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's going to be one hell of a weekend here for hockey in the Nashville area. So let's talk about the Preds and let's talk about the Blackhawks and this next matchup. Now that you're all caught up on the standings and you know the full picture in both division and wild card, this will be the final regular season meeting between the National Predators and the Chicago Blackhawks. Preds looking to go for the regular season sweep. Let's go back and talk about December the 21st, the first time these two teams met. It was the Preds with a 4-2 victory at Bridgestone Arena. UC Soros got the victory, 37 out of 39. Yossi had a goal and an assist. Parsonen had two assists in that game. Then we follow that up on March the 4th, and it was the Nashville Purs securing a 3-1 victory in Chicago. UC Soros again with the victory, 27 out of 28. Not nearly as heavy a workload as the first game against the Blackhawks. And it was Barry and Tomasino each with a goal against Chicago to secure the Nashville Purs that victory. So the Nashville Purs have picked up four out of a possible four points, and they've won both games against Chicago this season, looking to sweep the season series coming up here at Bridgestone Arena on Thursday night. Now, for the Nashville Predators, before we look at the Chicago Blackhawks, injuries have become something very, very big that we've talked about a lot as of late. I would like to know when Philip Forsberg is going to stop being listed as day-to-day -day and be listed as week-to-week -week or whatever it is, because Philip Forsberg now has been out for a significant amount of time and his status of day-to-day -day has never changed. Parsonen, also listed as day-to-day, -day. McDonough day-to-day, -day, and Carrier two to three weeks. I'm not giving you the entire injury report because it has gotten quite extensive and the rest of those players will simply not be in the lineup for the remainder of the season. When it comes to the Chicago Blackhawks, let's take a look at the most recent sample size. Let's go back and track five games worth of results. It was on March the 6th, a 5 nothing win versus the Ottawa Senators on the 8th of March, a 4-3 loss at the Detroit Red Wings. On the 10th of March, a 4-3 overtime loss at the Florida Panthers. On the 11th, a 3-1 loss at the Tampa Bay Lightning. But most recently, and pay attention to this, a 6-3 victory versus the Boston Bruins 
on home ice. Now, the Boston Bruins have already clinched a playoff spot, and they do not seem to be quite the juggernaut that they were the first half of the season. They have been suffering unexpected losses more often as of late. So this may not be as impactful as it would have been, say, a month or so ago to talk about. So a 6-3 victory over the Boston Bruins was their most recent game. Now, we take a look inside the rankings and the matchups between these two teams. In the goals for category, the National Purs lead in this statistical metric, 25th overall in the NHL with 2.83 goals per game. The Blackhawks, 2.52 goals per game is 32nd. That is, of course, last in the NHL. In the goals against category, the Preds are 2.89 per game. That's 12th best in the league. While the Blackhawks are giving up 3.54 per game, that is 25th overall in the NHL. In the shots for category, Nashville gives generating 30.4 on net per game is 21st best in the league. The Blackhawks are 31st in the league, only generating 26.7 shots on net per game. But the Nashville Predators do have a habit of giving up more shots than the average for a team. They have given up 33.4 shots per game over the course of the season. That ranks them 26th in the NHL, typically putting their net minders under heavier duress than seemingly necessary. Now, the Blackhawks have given up 34.2 shots per game over the course of the season. That has them 29th in the NHL. When it comes to the special teams matchup, the Preds are ahead in both statistical metrics, but let's go ahead and give you the data. On the power play, the Preds have the 25th rated power play in the league. They've scored 38 times on 203 opportunities. That's 18.7%. The Chicago Blackhawks have the 29th rated power play. They've only converted 16.8% of the time this season, 33 out of 197. On the penalty kill, the Nashville Predators PK has been surging as of late. It did dip one spot in the NHL ranking since the last show, but still highly impressive effort as of late. 81. 0.6% of the season, 12th best penalty kill in the league, and they've given up 40 power play goals against on the season. When it comes to the Chicago Blackhawks, their penalty kill is rated 22nd. They've given up 46 power play goals against on the season, and they have a kill rate of 76.4%. Individual statistics, we always give you the top five scores from each squad going into the matchup. I left Domi on in this particular situation when it comes to Chicago Blackhawks because I want to show you the disparity in how many points the Blackhawks have lost in their offense since the trade deadline. Domi had 18 goals and 31 assists for 49 points when he was traded. Now, the leading scorer for the Dallas Stars at this time going into this matchup is Radish. 20 goals, yes, highly impressive on the season. That does lead the Chicago Blackhawks. Add 13 assists to this and you'll get 33 points. Seth Jones at 10 and 21 for 31. Taves 14 and 14 for 28. Athens C 14 goals, 12 assists for 26 points. And Kurashev, 9 goals and 16 assists for 25 points. In that Morazic 8, 19 and 3 and 8, 9, 5 save percentage and a 3.63 goals against average but when you're on a team that has a goal differential of minus 68 your goaltender is probably not going to have very good individual statistics either going to the home side of the ledger for the individual statistics and it comes to Roman Yossi leading the Nashville Predators in scoring 17 goals and 41 assists for 58 points the 41 assists represents the number one overall in assists on the team Matt Duchesne 19 goals and that leads the Nashville Predators as far as active players Philip Forsberg also has 19 but still out injured 32 assists 51 points on the year Tommy Novak 13 goals 15 assists for 28 points what an impressive impressive run of hockey for young Tommy Novak in recent times Colton Sissons 11 and 16 for 27 and Glass 9 and 17 for 26 updated numbers on UC Soros 26 18 and 6 a 918 save percentage a 2.75 goals against average and he continues getting the job done if the Nashville Predators go on to make the playoffs it will be largely due to UC Soros's second half of the season efforts just an incredible netminder we'll talk more about him coming up in a few minutes and we'll talk about the reverse sports full game recap that most importantly is coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast back in just a second Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. 
It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We go all the way back to March the 14th of the year 2023 when the Nashville Predators were facing off against the Detroit Red Wings at Bridgestone Arena. John Hines deploys his lines in the following way. Tomasino Glass and Duchesne make up your first line. Sherwood, Novak, and Evangelista make up your second line. Trenton, Sissons, and Smith. Afanasev, Jankowski, and Asplund make up the fourth line. Your defensive pairings are Yossi and Faber, Luzon and Barry, Gravel, and Foot. McDonough, a late scratch for this game. Now, this is day-to-day. UC Soros gets the start in net for the Nashville Predators. We are 126 into the first period. UC Soros comes with a save on Pew Suter. It was a stuff attempt at the post and a really good stuff attempt and a really good save for the first one of the game. 146 of the first period. Huso comes up with a save on Glass. That's the Preds' first shot on goal of the game at 240 of the first period. Soros comes with a save on Lindstrom. 304. Huso comes with a save on Afanasev. Redirect. 307. Duchesne off to the box. Our first significant action of the game. Two minutes for tripping it would be cider then picking up a penalty two minutes for hooking we would see a lengthy four on four scenario there would be very limited offense and very limited offense on the national purse very brief power play afterwards 532 at the first period who still comes up with a save on duchene 726 sorrows comes up with a save on ernie 915 sherwood off the box two minutes for slashing sorrows has to come up with a big save on raymond national purse penalty kill good other than that 1453 who still comes up with a save on Parsonen at 1520. Larkin off to the box. Two minutes for tripping. And this is going to be the Nashville Purs back on the power play. Huso comes up with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi, at 1934. Saros comes up with a save on Mata, 1943. Saros, a save on Cider, plus the follow up by Larkin. We hit the end of the first period. Dallas, uh, Detroit surging hard at the end of the period. They end up with 10 shots on goal to Nashville Purs, five over the first. 20 minutes. We go into the second period on the clean sheet. We're a minute and 11 seconds in. Detroit has a penalty for too many men on the ice. That's a bench minor. Huso will come up with a save on Yossi during this power play, but the PK would be able to hold. In 544 of the second, Captain Roman Yossi's off the box. Two minutes for holding. Yossi Saros comes up with a save on Sider. Then comes up with another save on Raymond. The Nashville Predators are able to survive. 834. Now Hags off the box. Two minutes for holding. We are just trading power plays and special team opportunities here throughout the second period. Huso a save on Yossi and then another save on Duchesne. After the power play though, 10:58, it is Sherwood with his third goal of the season giving the Nashville Purse a 1 to nothing lead over the Detroit Red Wings. It was Tomasino's sauce pass across the slot and Sherwood's finish at the top of the crease that gives the Nashville Purse a 1 to nothing lead. 13:18 of the second period, UC Saros cuz with a save on Larkin 18:06, Saros a save on Hag's long shot 18:28, Saros a save on Pew Suter plus the rebound follow-up opportunity at the end of the second period. It is the National Purs leading one to nothing, but they're being outshot 21 to 13 on home ice. Going into the third period, the National Purs at 222 of the third pick up the second goal of the game. It's Tommy Novak's 13th of the season. This was one world-class deflection to the top shelf off of Foote's long shot pass. You also have to give Cal Foote a lot of credit right here for the way he held the puck in at the blue line and then turned and then fired an absolute laser of a pass right to the blade of Tommy Novak for the perfect, perfect deflection. There is hardly any goalie in the world that is going to be able to stop that shot. And if they do, it's going to be just pure, pure luck. The Preds with a 2-0 lead in this game in the third period. 320 in the third period. Saros comes up with a save on Cop. 644. Saros a save on Cider. And the Nashville Predators are not generating any offense. As a matter of fact, they're barely crossing over the red line. Seeing what happened to them at the end of the Anaheim game, it's obvious to see what's going on and to understand why they may be falling back to protect the house just a little bit more than you might want to with a two-goal lead and this much time left. At 11.49 of the third period, Waltman's off the box, two minutes for a tripping. I call this a clock eater right here because there just simply wasn't much happening for the Predators' power play, but two minutes did come and go. That's good news for the National Predators. 16.43, we see Saros come up with the save on Kubelik at 17.20. Fabro gets called two minutes for roughing. It was an absolute sell job by Larkin. Fabro took him hard into the boards, but it was a clean hit. Throwing the head back, putting the glove up and holding the face area, that absolutely got the call 
from the neutral zone. So Detroit finds themselves on a power play. They pull the net miter. They go with the six on four scenario. And Chase on is converting. It's a rebound that squeezes through the arm. And it was the second putback. And the second putback came off the toe of the skate that was moving forward. It was a significant and lengthy review that was called upon by the league office and the officials there on the ice. It was reviewed for a substantial amount of time, enough time that each and every one of the broadcasters was able to make a lengthy case for why this would not be a goal and why this would be a kick. It turns out to be a good goal. Uh, the National Predators got screwed in this one. The penalty call was not a good call, and the goal call, I don't think this was necessarily good here. So 2-1 to one in favor of the Nashville Predators. We go to the 6-on-5 scenario to wrap up the game. It's the Nashville Predators securing the victory 2-1 to one over Detroit. The Preds only three total shots on goal. One of them went in in the third period, and that was the game winner by Tommy Novak, but only three total shots on goal. They protected the house and locked it down, keeping Detroit to only eight shots on goal and only a six-on-four goal there at the very end of the game. So for the Nashville Predators, they got the job done. The Detroit Red Wings have been a better team as of late. They've been getting better as the season has gone along. They were competing for one of the Eastern Conference wildcard spots, not that long ago, but the Eastern Conference is so, so stacked that I really would not discredit or disrespect or discount the Red Wings where they are at this point in their uh, development, at this point in their season, uh, just because they're falling out of the Eastern Conference playoff race. Uh, if the National Predators were over in that conference, they would also be falling considerably out of the playoff race. Everybody's falling out of the playoff race. The Eastern Conference playoff practice is going to be simply incredible. That was the Reverse Sports full game recap. The Nashville Predators secure a victory over the Detroit Red Wings, making the standings a whole hell of a lot more interesting going into this next couple of games within the Central Division. We've got high intrigue coming at Bridgestone Arena. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy owner operator of strong style fitness and that's me and my training assistant rizzo and we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes bar inspired classes to bottle workouts boot camps guided stretching and more all taught by a certified personal trainer me to learn more Go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been what you were going through, and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. UC Soros in this game was 28 out of 29. And you know what? I don't typically say this, but UC Soros was screwed out of his shutout tonight. Uh, he had two bad calls. The penalty call against Fabro, and then the goal that was allowed that was clearly kicked into the net. Uh, those were bad calls. He was screwed out of a shutout. He was absolutely outstanding throughout this game. Detroit has some incredible young offensive talent, and they were uh, certainly putting their tools on display at different times of this game. And there were some surges by the wings, especially at the end of seemingly each period. And UC Saros was able to hold strong. Uh, very important two points for the National Predators. Very important victory for UC UC Soros, his stats continue to impress. 26 victories now on the season, a 9-1-8 save percentage overall on the season. And again, screwed out of that shutout. Sherwood, a goal, assist in this game. Only three hits credited. I have to say, I think that that number is tremendously undercounted, undervalued. And as I go and I look through the entirety of the hits for the whole box score, I think that Sherwood was undercounted in this game. Regardless of the number of hits he's credited with, you saw it if you watched the game. He was a heat-seeking missile of physicality out there. He was a terminator on the ice tonight. Focused, determined, making an impact every time that he was out there. He only played 9.59 in total time on ice. He led the team with three hits. He had a goal. He had an assist. He led the team in points. And he was also very impressive in literally every stride that he took in this game. I understand exactly what the coaching staff must have seen in training camp, which led him to be on the roster at the beginning of the season and have such an impressive debut against the Sharks. 
then faded back to Milwaukee. Continued to impress, though, now with this call-up. Sherwood seems to be finding a real role with the new transition of the team. The youth and the energy and the speed the team is playing with as of late seems to be feeding right into Sherwood's wheelhouse. Again, you got to give the guy stick taps for this particular game. A goal and assist, three hits, and just all over the ice, making an impact in only 10 minutes of total time on ice. Making an impact. Last year, we had a particular rant, uh, the curious case of Tommy Novak. I was confounded that he was not a part of the Nashville Predators roster after starting and having such a successful call-up with the team last year. I thought he had all of the tools to remain here and be a Nashville Predator, but he found himself very quietly back in Milwaukee and seemingly staying in Milwaukee. This season gets the call-up, adds a goal in this game. It's the game-winning goal. It's his 13th goal of the season. Tommy Novak now 28 points on the season, and he just continues to impress his 13 goals are only six behind the team lead for the Nashville Predators and the way Tommy Novak has been skating as of late I wouldn't be shocked if he makes it to 20 goals in the season seven goals in the in the remaining schedule that's a lot that that would be a lot but the way Tommy Novak has played these last few weeks has been just absolutely incredible and that deflection that deflection goes in the category of five star. It goes on the end of season highlight reel. It should. It should go on the NHL's highlight reel for the entire week. Great deflection. I don't think there's a goalie in the world that could have stopped that one. And on that play, Foot picks up and assists. He was very solid tonight. No, he didn't put up a ton of time on ice. 1507. That's a step up compared to some of the games he's had since he's been with the Nashville Predators. But it was a very solid professional and heads up high hockey IQ play. Keep the puck in along the wall while skating back towards the blue line. Shield the defender make a perfect laser accurate pass right to the blade of Tommy Novak to be deflected into the top of the net. Great job by foot out there. Deserves some credit. Another young player that is progressing along with the rest of the group for this national person team and the defense overall. Man, did they protect the house. The third period, listen, that might be a little extreme. It was a two-goal lead. You don't want to sit back on your half of the rink the entirety of the period. The national person only generated three shots on net for the entire period. One goes in. It is the game winner. That's where the credit does come in, but you have to push the pace a little bit more in the third period, and, and it's understandable. Again, I made the point a little bit earlier what happened in Anaheim giving up two goals at the very end of the game almost giving up that game made the Nashville Predators perhaps a little bit more aware maybe hyper aware of the defensive mentality necessary to close out a game in the third period they were dialed in and locked in listen they had a tremendous defensive period yes they gave up a goal there at the end the six on four we've discussed that a couple of times but they truly put in a tremendous effort out there on the defense tonight protected the house and were incredibly smooth and slick there all throughout the third period uh, they kept Detroit other than the six on four scenarios quite far to the outside very very good job overall by the Nashville Predators defense wanted to make sure we give credit right there where credit is due. I want to talk to Brian Baston. Brian Baston has the charts you need to see. He's got the numbers you need to know. He's on the four check. He was at the game tonight at Bridgestone Arena, so he was on the front lines and in the trenches, and he's got this report for you. Looking forward to watching Brian right now. The Nashville Predators returned home after a long and grueling 12-game road trip, and their first game back in the Bridgestone Arena was a 2-1 victory over the Detroit Red Wings. Now, after the victory, Nashville does sit just four points back with three games in hand out of a playoff spot behind the Winnipeg Jets, who they will be, coincidentally, playing on Saturday. But one of the things about this game, if you might have seen it, is that, well, it was pretty ugly. Uh, Nashville was... On top of things, for the most part, defensively, they looked pretty calm and in control when they were in their own defensive zone. But on offense, they just couldn't get anything going. But yet, they still were able to manage and create enough opportunities to get the, get those two goals. And that was enough to beat the Red Wings. But I think one of the most underrated things that we saw tonight was the performance of the penalty kill. In fact, it wasn't just the performance of the penalty kill itself. You've heard me, you know, during the game, talk a lot about what Jeremy Lazan did. Who He did have an excellent game, especially defensively. Uh, but there's... There's one player that I want to highlight, and it's not just because of tonight, because if you look at the stats for tonight, it doesn't seem like it's that great, but let's talk about one guy who has really been driving this penalty kill, and that guy is going to be the topic of tonight's one big stat. Cole Smith. 
Yes, yes, yes. There has been a lot said about him. Um, probably wondering where a lot, of, a lot of it's coming from. But since things have changed and we've gotten into rebuilding mode after the trade deadline, the online fervor about Cole Smith and his plays on this roster has seemed to die down a little bit. But it may not just be because we're overwhelmed with all kinds of other news. It's because Cole Smith has been playing pretty well. Now, obviously, still struggling to get on the score sheet. But I think that his biggest role that he's been doing great at has been on the penalty kill. Now, we've seen all, all year, especially recently with this uh, recent stretch of penalty kill success, where Cole Smith and Yakov Trenin are creating a lot of opportunities. Uh, Cole Smith is you know great at creating those turnovers or blocking shots that give the puck, um, get the puck to their teammates to be able to actually have a counterattack. But on the season, nobody has more shot attempts than Cole Smith. He added his 16th shot attempt of, the, of uh, uh, shorthanded of the season, which he leads all uh, all of his teammates in that, as well as nine shots on goal, which ties him with Yakov Trenin. And this is, you know, he's been a guy that can actually be fairly reliable. Uh, Coach Hines talked a lot about the trust that he has in him to play him along Colton Sissons uh, tonight, uh, adding that, you know, they trust him so much that they are able to get him out with the first penalty kill, kill unit, bring him back in for a break, and have him out there uh, double shifted towards the last 30, 40 seconds of the penalty kill. And that's worked all night long. And for the last you know handful of games so something is obviously working uh, obviously we really do want to see more goals from from Smith but he's playing exceedingly well on a team that let's face it isn't playing a whole lot of defense and he's doing a pretty good job and not just defense though he is also taking care of the puck he averages about 2.3 takeaways per 60 minutes and just under one giveaway under 60 seconds so that's a pretty good turnover ratio uh, no matter how you want to say, uh, you want to appeal that so again Cole Smith you have played a really valid valid role in this team and a lot of the success that we've seen with this penalty kill Yes, some of it is UC Saros, some of it is Jeremy Lazan, but Cole Smith has played a very, very strong part in it. And so sometimes the best way to you know, play on the penalty kill is by having the puck and trying to score yourself. So Cole Smith, hopefully he can continue this role and the uh, penalty kill can continue to be as good as it has been. And that's tonight's One Big Stat. Charlie? The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. When it comes to the box score, your goal scores for the Nashville Predators, Sherwood and Novak. When it comes to assists, three by the forwards, Sherwood, Sissons, and Tomasino. One on the defensive side of things. That comes from Cal Foote. When it comes to shots on goal, three was the high, and you had three players with three shots on goal, making three the magic number. Matt Duchesne, Tommy Novak, and also the captain, Roman Yossi. When it comes to block shots, three again, the magic number in this category. Luzon and Yossi with three apiece. And when it comes to leading hits, wow, three, the magic number yet again. Glad I could drop so many De La Soul references here during the box score. Three hits for Sherwood again. I think that the hits were undercounted tonight in this game. Yakov Trenin also delivered three hits in this game, but I wanted to give Sherwood the extra credit on this particular one. When it comes to time on ice leaders, Matthew Shane led all forwards 20 23 in total time on ice. One other forward eclipsing 20 minutes, and that was Cody Glass at 20 minutes and six seconds. Your least amount of time skated by a forward was perhaps the most impressive and most impactful forward of the entire game. Sherwood, 9.59 in total time skating. When it comes to the defense, you know the captain, Roman Yossi, piled up some minutes tonight, as he always does. 25.56 total time on ice, 7 minutes and 1 second of power play time. And, you know, it's something we didn't spend a lot of time getting into, but the power play, 1,000% ineffective in this game. And that was a team that they could have taken advantage of numerous times. They've got to clean that up. They're looking at making a run here at a playoff spot. They've got to, the penalty kill has served in the rankings in recent weeks. The 
power play. I don't anticipate it would have a surge of that type of level, but they've got to clean that up. There's too much talent out there for the Nashville Predators to not be putting the puck in the net on a more regular basis. The, the power play almost cost them tonight. And that's 701 of power play time for the captain, Roman Yossi. Honestly, it needs to be better. This was not Roman Yossi's best game. Usually his performance is a little bit better, but as a part of the overall defense, of course, and as the captain, he led his squad to a victory, and his performance was certainly solid. He is just so otherworldly on so many occasions that we come to expect a very high bar when it comes to Roman Yossi. The least amount of time skated by a defender was Cal Foot 15. Oh, no, no, no. Gravel, 11.31, filling in for McDonough on the third pair. Uh, Foot skated 15.07, and it's actually a little bit of a step up for him. Fabro, 18.22 in time on ice. Dante Fabro, just before we wrap up the analysis right here in the box score, Dante Fabro has been playing better and better hockey as of late. Thought he got screwed on a penalty call tonight in the third period, but Dante Fabro may be playing his best stretch of hockey uh, as a consistent Nashville Predators defender right now. Perhaps after the trade deadline, the stress of that particular time period has gone away. The beard he is growing seems to indicate that he's ready for a whole new level of play and jam out there. And he certainly has been bringing it as of late. That's going to do it for the box score that gets you all caught up. Sure to appreciate everybody checking out the Renegades of Puck podcast. We've got just one more segment to go. We'll be back to close it up. Trust me. You'll want to find out how I physically fell out today getting ready for the Nashville Predators game. Believe me, it's a more interesting story than you might think. We'll be back. Renegades of Puck podcast. Just a second. I'm Crazy Charlie Sonia, captain of the Renegades of Puck. I'm also tired of the cold, tired of the dark, and tired of being landlocked. I'm also willing to bet that I'm not the only one who could use some sun, fun, and time in paradise with friends. That's exactly why I called our great friend Pete Weber. He told me, call ships and trips travel, and now we're all going to Mexico. That's right, Renegades of Puck, July 15th to the 20th of 2023. Dreams Vallarta Resort in Puerto Vallarta is the destination to hang with Pete Weber in paradise. To join Pete and the Renegades of Puck in Puerto Vallarta, go to www.shipsandtripstravel.com. That's ship and trips travel.com and just click on the ROP on vacation tab. Don't stay landlocked. Join the Renegades of Puck in Paradise July 15th to the 20th, 2023 in Porto Vallarta. Pete Weber, the Renegades of Puck and you. It's time to ditch those skates for flip-flops and fun in the sun. So getting ready for home base freak out too, of course, there are hundreds and hundreds of things that need to be done and there are communications that need to be sent. There are emails, there are direct messages to respond to, there are tweets, there are social media posts. And then of course there is the invitation process and all of you know me and how serious I take planning and executing an event. So for me, it is about reaching out to each and every person as much as I possibly can, making sure they know that they're welcome, making sure that they know that they're invited. And today, I started working the phones sometime around 10 a.m. Central Time. National Predators puck drop set for 7 p.m. When I finally looked up and stopped working the phones, it was not because I was necessarily finished. I had sent hundreds, hundreds of messages, by the way. Some really great people are coming to Home Base Freak Out too, and I hope you're going to be there as well. Uh, we're going to start promoting those coming up in the next couple of days, but really, really great and really cool people coming. So working the phone, sending text messages to a point where my hand actually hurts from sending text messages, and it got to a point where I was so physically exhausted uh, that before puck drop tonight, uh, I, I actually collapsed uh, in my home uh, from lack of uh, uh, hydration, lack of nutrition, uh, and, and lack of, frankly, doing anything other than sending messages about the home base freakout. Listen, I am dialed in. This is a really big and important event for the Renegades of Puck. And working the phones is just one aspect. It's just one thing uh, that we are doing. The new poster, the new graphics, the t-shirts are coming along, the giveaways, all of this stuff. It's all coming along. It's all coming together, and it's all going to be there next Friday at 
home base freak out to a tailgate brewery music row i hope that each and every one of you can come out and join us i have us a venue i have us an incredible partner i have a bunch of great guests coming out and the renegades of puck will all be in attendance so i cannot wait to see each and every one of you this is our big opportunity to stand face to face to shake hands and to talk about the game that we love the most and under less stressful situations than normal away from the rink a nice fun casual night crazy kyle's gonna be there i drop that one willie donick's gonna stop by i know that for a fact haley murphy's gonna come by again this year sean c smith brian baston alex daughtry these are just a couple of the people that are going to be stopping by you know all those guys i got a message out to the bag chuckers i'll confirm if we can get those guys to come on out they're very very busy that's an incredibly important weekend uh, for everybody in the national purse community and i've invited every single person that works for the national Predators organization whether you are in the social media or the media relations or or any other department working over there to clear up any confusion i'm going to say this right now if you work for the nashville predators or you are a part of that organization you are 100 percent welcome at our event you are invited and i would love to have you at our event the doors are open it is a celebration of hockey everyone is welcome that includes each and every one of you. Please come on out and join us. I'm going to continue working the phones, and I'm going to try to remember to drink some water and perhaps pause and eat a meal uh, next time before I fall out. That's why we got a little bit of late start today. We were a couple hours behind on tape delay because, frankly, uh, my health uh, took over and my body determined that it was going to be shut down for a few hours. So appreciate each and every one of you. Man, I sure do love each and every one of you, Renegades. You know, it's uh Make sure, make sure you tell the renegades in your life you love them. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what kind of bad news is just around the corner, and you never know what kind of crisis is uh, is waiting for you next. So if it's a quiet moment for you and you have that opportunity, pick up the phone, send a message, send a text, make a post, whatever it is. Tell the people in your life you love them. Hug them. It's really, really important, especially on a day like today. Just trust me on that. I sure do appreciate each and every one of you. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your viewership. Most importantly, I appreciate you. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia, and I'm getting all emotional up in the bunker, so I'm going to go ahead and say stick taps, love, and respect.